Can Real Madrid get their revenge on PSG or are we going to see a bit of magic from Lionel Messi? I guess we're going to have to wait and see in the Champions League. Uh, sorry, too far? But of course, right everyone, it is Finn here and welcome to my Champions League round of 16 second leg prediction video. Where of course today we're going to be predicting the second leg, the reverse fixture of the Champions League round of 16. Only 16 teams remain and these are the 8 games to decide. Who goes to the quarterfinal? It is a big stage in the competition, and I guess we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But of course, before jumping straight into my predictions, predicting which eight teams will go through to the next round of the competition, let me just remind you, do not forget that if you are not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe down below. Obviously, looking to reach 3,000 subscribers very soon, eventually 4,000, 5,000, you know how it goes. So of course, every little step helps, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. But just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. But of course, jumping straight into the predictions, good old Bayern Munich, Bayern Munchen versus Salzburg. Now, Bayern Munich, I don't know what happened to you guys, but you almost lost this game. It was just because of an amazing Kingsley Komen equalizer that you ended up getting this one, uh, this result. But of course, I mean, that's Bayern Munich just proving that they are human, I guess. I don't know what it is about this Bayern Munich team. They're the kind of team that could smack anyone in the world 5-0, but they could lose to Kaiser Chiefs 1-0 if they wanted to. I don't know, Bayern Munich are very weird like that, but of course, looking at them versus Salzburg, although Salzburg proved they've got the guts, they've got what it takes to score versus Bayern Munich and almost get a result. At the end of the day, I do think Bayern Munich will end up taking this one. As I said, Bayern Munich are really weird in terms of their results sometimes, but I do think Bayern Munich, from what we've seen so far this season and over the years, I do think they should take this 2-0. I don't think it will be an absolute wallop of a result, but I do think that they will get it. And in terms of a player to watch, going to sound very weird with a team that's got Manuel Neuer, Robert Lewandowski. I am going to go for the Knights of Nicholas Sul. <laughs> you serious? A player who's going to go to Borussia Dortmund at the end of the season, which, funnily enough, ever since that's been announced, he's been an absolutely brilliant centre back for Bayern Munich. So, you know what? I am going to believe in the system, and I do think he will be my player to watch. He's been scoring goals as of late, defensively been solid. He will be my player to watch. Moving on to the next game, we've got Liverpool, the Carabao Cup winners. Versus Inter. Now, of course, looking at these two teams, Liverpool are the clear favourites. They've got a perfect run in the Champions League so far. Obviously, looking at Inter, although they did lose 2-0 to Liverpool in their previous Champions League game, I mean, they've just been looking so good in the league. They look like they could win Serie A this season. Martinez scoring a hat-trick in his previous game. Dzeko scoring two goals. Things just look so good for Inter. But the question is, can they get more than two goals past Liverpool in their previous game? Can they get two more goals? Then Liverpool in their next game. Now, that's not necessarily something I can see happen. I could see Inter beating Liverpool, but by more than two goals, it just doesn't seem likely. Just looking at Liverpool, how good they've been in all competitions as of late, I do think I am going to have to give Liverpool a 2-1 win. I don't think they're going to play their absolutely strongest team um, in this competition, although they might. Obviously, they would like to secure a win. Uh, but I do think Inter, obviously, they are going to fight seriously hard for this one. But I just don't see it happening. And of course, in terms of a player to watch, finally, I'm not going to go for Mo Salah, although he is a very good option. I'm going to go for the likes of Luis Diaz, the Colombian winger. I mean, when he made his debut in the Champions League for Liverpool, once again, when he came on the pitch as a substitute, he looked really, really good for Liverpool. The runs he makes, he's just so technically good and I mean people laughed when they said that he could be the perfect replacement for Sadio Mane when he left one day. I'm saying this right now I think he's a brilliant player and he's got what it takes to provide a little bit of magic here and there and versus this Inter team I think it is very very possible. Moving on to game number three Manchester City versus Sporting. Now when we talk about football we like to say that absolutely anything can happen but coming back from a 5-0 loss I mean not necessarily anything can happen in my opinion oh, that's not very nice i mean unless it was barcelona they could come back from 5-0 down and they could get the win but then they'll still lose in the next round that's the closest thing to a major comeback we've seen in the champions league looking at man city they are just so incredibly good i think their second team could get a champions league spot in the premier league they are that good obviously just coming off of a 4-1 win versus my team manchester united nope we're not going to talk about that yet and the topic for today's discussion is chess pain 
Um, yeah, they're just looking so incredibly good at the moment. Versus Sporting, I just don't see them um, losing this lead whatsoever. Something would be insanely wrong if they did. I see them getting a 3-1 win. I do see them maybe just letting their guard down, conceding a silly goal. But there's absolutely no way they won't go through to the next stage. In terms of my player to watch, I would like to go for Kevin De Bruyne, in my opinion, best midfielder in the world. I know Manchester United fans saying that I might get a lot of criticism, but at the end of the day, he did seem to pick up a knock towards the end of the City game. They might want to rest him. So I'm going to go for the next best, best thing in the likes of Riyad Mahrez. Been in goal scoring form, absolutely magical player on the ball and versus sporting i think he will provide heading into our next game it is going to be the biggest one of the round of 16 leg two obviously real madrid versus psg <laughs> obviously PSG heading into this one with a 1-0 win and this is a massive game because you're essentially saying a team like Real Madrid one of the best teams in the world won more Champions League than anyone else won't make it through to the quarterfinals or you're telling me a team with Neymar Mbappe and Messi in attack won't make it through to the quarters quarters this is an absolutely massive game to talk about obviously looking at Real Madrid I think they've done really really well in the league I think they've got brilliant players in their squad and I think they have potential potential to come back versus PSG because looking at PSG ever since beating Real Madrid in the Champions League they haven't had the best of times they've just lost 1-0 to Nice they lost 3-1 to Nantes not too long ago PSG I mean they don't have the best of luck in the Champions League so it's them versus the most successful Champions League team of all time I really do think Real Madrid have potential to bring this one back I do think Real Madrid are going to come back with a 2-1 win meaning that it will be 2-2 on penalties <laughs> Are you not entertained? Obviously, I mean, I can't put the penalties in here, which is somewhat silly. I do think that the app should allow this. But obviously, if it goes to penalties, who do I think will end up winning it? I think at the end of the day, Real Madrid would probably end up winning it on penalties. I think they've got the more experience. They've got the better penalty takers. And I do think Real Madrid will advance to the next stage. And in terms of a player to watch, although from the losing team, it still has to be good old Kylian Mbappe. Real Madrid probably not as interested as they were in him since he scored past them in the previous game. But of course, looking at Kylian Mbappe, I think everything positive in PSG's favor last time was due to him. He's absolutely brilliant on the ball, scored past Real Madrid, and he will be my player to watch versus them. Heading on to our next game, Ajax versus Benfica. Now, obviously, I thought Ajax would absolutely run over Benfica in this game. I have to give Benfica credit. I think Silva, Rafa Silva up front, his pace was absolutely magnificent in the previous game. I think Everton had a good game. Uh, the striker, not the club, obviously. I don't think Everton have had a good game in quite a long time. I think uh, Vertonghen, I think this entire Benfica team had a really good game last time out. But I do have to say, I do think Ajax still were the better team. Yes, it was a draw. Obviously, Sebastian Halle, so good. He scored on both sides of the pitch for both teams. But at the end of the day, looking at these two teams, I do think Ajax have been slightly better. And I am going to give them a 2-1 win. Not a massive win, but I will give them the win. And the player to watch, as I said, Sebastian Halle scored a goal and an own goal in the previous game for them. Has been absolutely blowing things up in the Eredivisie. Scoring goals for fun. He is in the prime of his career at the moment. And as I said, it will be my player to watch for this fixture. Heading on to our next game, Manchester United versus Atletico Madrid. Now, as a football fan, the way things work as a football fan, if no one knows this at this point, is you're always supposed to have somewhat belief in your team. You're always supposed to say, I do think our team could get points here. But after that 4-1 loss to Manchester City, after seeing Maguire still once again, I just, I don't understand how Harry Maguire is a professional footballer. It is horrific at the moment for Manchester United. I just can't see us getting a win versus Atletico Madrid. And that shocks me because Atletico Madrid, they haven't had a fantastic season. There was a stage check. Three losses in a row right here in the Champions League. They've had a horrible Champions League campaign. They haven't been great in the Liga. But yet, I still think they can beat Manchester United. Something is so fundamentally wrong with this Manchester United team. And obviously, heading into this game, it is not certain that either Cavani or Cristiano Ronaldo will be ready for this game. I just haven't been convinced at all by Manchester United for quite a while here. Where Atletico Madrid, they've seemed to pick up, picked up on form since the last time these two teams played against each other. Recently got, I think it was a 4-1 win versus Real Batiste. I don't know. Atletico Madrid looking so strong at the moment versus my team. I hate to say it, but I think they're going to get a 2-1 win. And the player to watch is going to be the young Zhao Felix. Obviously scored an early goal versus Manchester United last time around. Scored two goals versus Real Batiste. Once again, just a player on four men versus my team, Manchester United. I just... 
I just don't believe we're going to get the result there. It breaks my heart as a United fan to say, but it is what it is. That's the reality of it. I'll be happily proven wrong. Um, in fact, maybe that's where you should make predictions. Always bet against your team because either way, you're going to end up winning. But but moving on, we've got Lowell versus Chelsea next. Now, for some reason, Chelsea not loading there for some reason. But obviously, on the day, I do think they'll show up, although the jersey hasn't showed up here. Uh, sorry, that's very much a lame dad joke. I am going to give Chelsea a 2-1 win. They've got a history versus Lowell in the Champions League. They always seem to do well. They are the better team. Lowell obviously not having a fantastic season after winning the league last season in the French League. Once again, not too sure how that happened. Maybe PSG with all their money ended up paying Lowell to say, you know what, it looks a bit obvious that we're winning too much here. Please do win the league. We'll pay you to win the league, but then just give it to us the next season. I don't know. I think that's a bit dodgy, mate. That's what it seems to be going like. But obviously, looking at Lowell versus Chelsea, looking at these two teams, where they are at the moment, Chelsea just coming out of a cup final. Chelsea obviously are the best team, getting a 4-0 win versus Burnley over the weekend. Everything's in Chelsea's favour, and I do think they'll get a win. And in terms of a player to watch, it is going to be the German Kai Havertz, scoring two goals past Burnley, just in the Champions League, has a good history with Chelsea, obviously getting the winning goal in a Champions League final. I do think Kai Havertz will be my player to watch. And that, of course, takes us to our final game of the Champions League for the round two or leg two of the round of 16 Juventus versus Villarreal it is all squared at 1-1 anyone can take it obviously looking at Juventus ended up scoring an early goal as Vlahovic the Serbian striker scored 32 seconds into his Champions League debut I haven't seen anything finish that quickly since um well, maybe that's a topic for a different time. But looking at Juventus versus Villarreal. Villarreal, just like Lille in the French League, not necessarily a team having a fantastic tournament or a fantastic season overall. Obviously making it to this stage. I think Villarreal have had a relatively good Champions League campaign. I think the likes of Dan Juma is having a fantastic season. I think he's definitely a brilliant player. They'll be picked up by another club. But looking at Juventus, obviously neither of these two teams maybe where they are in their domestic leagues at the moment. But Juventus by far the better team, I'd say, between these two teams still, even though they've had a bad season. And I do think they will get I'm tempted to say a 2-0 win. It could be a 2-1 win. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to be too picky about it. The moral of the story, I think Juventus will win it. And the player to watch, it has to be the Serbian striker who scored 32 seconds in his Champions League debut, Vlahovic. Obviously, looking at Dusan Vlahovic, obviously three goals in five Serie A games. For Juventus, 20 goals in Serie A overall. Absolutely brilliant looking young striker. He'll achieve so much. And I think versus Villarreal will help them get a result. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for my Champions League round of 16 predictions. Once again, we've got some big games, big results where they'll be correct with all of them. I mean... I'm hoping I'm wrong with this one, but of course, I feel like I've done an okay job so far with these predictions, some big results to talk about, but of course, football, always wildly unpredictable, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But of course, right everyone, it is Finn here, hope you ended up enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed, once again, always looking to slowly build this channel, I mean, it would be nice if we reach 3,000 very, very soon, but of course, guys, if you could just subscribe down below, I'd really appreciate it, and getting this video to 20 likes, let's see if we can do that, that is the like goal for this video. But right, guys, this has been FYW, and I feel like I've said that about five times in this video already. But I'll see you all very, very soon. Like, subscribe, all of the good things, and I'll see you in the quarterfinals. Cheers.